Because of our previous video, we've now shown that there's a one-to-one -one correspondence with cyclic codes and ideals of a cyclic group ring. And so using the natural quotient map, um, we can map Z2X onto the group ring Z2ZN. Because of course we saw earlier that Z2ZN, this is just Z2X where we then mod out by the polynomial X to the N minus one. Okay, so this is where our codes are going to live. We're going to look at ideals of our group ring, uh, but the group ring is a quotient of a polynomial ring. This polynomial ring Z2X is a Euclidean domain because Z2 is a field. In particular, it's a principal ideal domain. And so every ideal of Z2X is principal. Does that have some consequence on the quotient Z2ZN, the group ring? Absolutely. We see that from this correspondence, the ideals of the group ring Z2ZN are principal ideals which correspond to the ideal, uh, excuse me, they correspond as ideals of the form um, M of X. So it's principal, it's generated by a polynomial, but we can do one better than that. Um, the, the, the kernel of this map, of course, is the principal ideal generated by x to the n minus one. Um, these principal ideals, the ideals of z2, uh, zn here, they're gonna be principal, yes, and they're going to be, gener uh, the, these, these polynomials m of x have to be the divisors of x to the n minus one. So how these things factor is gonna matter, all right? So we, we look at the factor, we look at the factorization of x to the n minus one using binary coefficients. And when we look at those irreducible uh, polynomials. We choose one and that then generates an ideal that then generates a cyclic code. And so given a cyclic code, it has this unique generator. Um, we call that the minimum, uh, excuse me, the minimal, the minimal generator polynomial of the cyclic code. Now, why is, can I say it's unique? Because um, a principal ideal, its generator is only unique up to association. But in Z2X, the only unit is one. I mean, literally, the only unit is one. Um, and so it doesn't have any associates, MX. It's, it is, in fact, unique in that situation. So let me give you an example of how we could then construct a code. Uh, so to find a cyclic code, we have to pick an ideal of Z2N, which comes down to picking an irreducible factor. It doesn't even have to be irreducible factor, but we just have to pick a polynomial factor of X to the, uh, X to the N minus one for a fixed N. And how you choose that factor will, of course, make, make a difference, right? Uh, because, you know, if you choose the factor to be too big or too small, maybe you don't have enough code words, maybe they're too close together, uh, we want them to be sparse. There's some, there's some more that we'll talk about in the next lecture, of course. But for the sake of example, suppose we are going to look at the polynomial x to the 7 minus 1, um, and we look at this as a binary polynomial. I will leave it as an exercise to the viewer to verify that this is, in fact, its prime factorization over Z2x. Uh, now, the first factor should be pretty obvious because it's x to the 7 minus 1. Um, we do have the factorization of x minus 1 times x to the 6 times x to the 5th time, uh, plus x to the 4th plus x cubed plus x squared plus x plus 1. All right, that one's pretty easy because this works over the rational numbers as well. Uh, nothing special about Z2 there. But I would then leave it up to you, the viewer here, to verify the product of those two irreducible cubic polynomials, 1 plus x plus uh, x cubed and 1 plus x squared plus x cubed. Their product does, in fact, equal that. So you can multiply this out and verify it. Um, clearly, 1 plus x is irreducible because it is linear. Um, why are these two cubic polynomials um, irreducible? That's easy to check as well because it'll be irreducible if and only if it doesn't have a root. Um, Z2 has only two numbers at all, 0 and 1, and a quick check shows for both of them um, that neither 0 or 1 are roots. So this is, in fact, an irreducible factorization of x to the 7 minus 1. So if we want to create a cyclic code, we have to pick a generator polynomial. And so for the sake of this example, I'm gonna choose my generator polynomial g of x to be one plus x plus x cubed, just because I want, I just picked that one, right? Uh, let me show you then what type of code that gives us, okay? So because we're looking at x to the seven minus one, the encoded messages are going to be seven bits long. Now, because this polynomial is degree three, what that tells you is if I take a four bit message and you times it by this polynomial because its degree is three, that'll then create 
seven bit messages. So that's where we're coming up to here. So using G here, I then have a seven comma seven minus three, that is a seven four block code. That is uh, this, this polynomial code will be a seven four code. Okay, um, then, and then G of course is gonna be, um, it's, it's gonna be our encoding map, right? So if we take polynomials in, uh, so we start off with four bits, so that means we're gonna look at P3. So we can send over from P3 to P7 by multiplying by this polynomial GX, okay? Now, the kernel of the map of multiplying by GX is gonna be this polynomial H of X, where H of X is you take the polynomial uh, X to the seven minus one and you just take away G of X. Uh, so just get rid of G and you take everything else. So H is going to be one plus X times one plus X squared plus X cubed, which if you multiply that out, you're gonna end up with, whoops, uh, one plus X plus X squared plus X to the fourth like so. So this is gonna be H and this is gonna be G. Notice of course that since H is just X to the seventh minus one over G of X, if you take H of X and you times that by G of X, this is going to give you X to the seven minus one, but in the group ring Z2, uh, Z7, this is the same thing, uh, excuse me, Z2, no, yeah, Z2, C7, this is the same thing as just zero, right? Because that's how we mod these things out. H times G is gonna equal zero in that situation because that this element belongs to the ideal. It, it generates the ideal. That's what zero means in this situation. Um, and I should have written a, a P6 here earlier. Sorry about that. Um, because since G is a cubic polynomial, we start off with three bits. You're gonna add three more to it, the degree here. So you end up with P6. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, we'd reduce mod seven, so that means our polynomials are going to be at degree at most six. So using the standard basis for P3, which is going to just going to be one x x squared x cubed, and using the standard basis for P6, which is just going to be one uh, x x squared x cubed x to the fourth x to the fifth x to the sixth, etc. Um, we can then represent the matrix. Uh, that is, we can represent multiplication by G using the following matrix right here. Okay, uh, so that is if you multiply one, if you multiply, excuse me, if you multiply one by G, you're going to end up with this thing right here, right? So you end up with one X X cubed, like so. If you multiply X by this thing, you're going to get X X squared X to the fourth. It just, it cycles up, of course. If you take X squared and times it by G, you're going to get X squared X cubed X to the fifth. And then lastly, a few times X to the third by G, you'll get X cubed, X to the fourth, and X to the sixth like so. All right, so putting, putting this into coordinates, we get exactly the following generated matrix. So this polynomial, we can identify with this matrix. Multiplication of vectors by this matrix does the exact same thing as multiplication of polynomials by that matrix G, uh, that polynomial G does the exact same thing. Uh, then when we get H, can I get them both on the same screen? Aha. Uh, so then the polynomial H, 1 plus X plus X squared plus X to the fourth, is going to coincide with this matrix right here. And I want you to notice, uh, I, want to no one, I want you to notice a few things here. Like when we talk about G, I'm going to slide that thing back up. When you, when you had G, um, if you looked at the first column, since this first column is supposed to be one times G, you should just see its coefficients. The constant term, the linear term, the quadratic term, the cubic term, uh, the quartic, the quintic, and the hextic, sextic, something like that, uh, terms right there. So basically the first column is just the coefficients of G. But then the next column is just you cycle down a row, then you cycle down a row, then you cycle down a row. And that's how you form G. It's you just take the coefficients of little g and you just cycle through. Um, you're going to get something very, very similar for H here when you put it into coordinates. I want you to look at the first row right here, right? Um, I want you to take the coefficients of H, but list them backwards, okay? So notice you have 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, okay? So when we take our 
polynomial h listed backwards. Those are the coefficients in the first row. Then the second row is you're just going to cycle that through, push it to the left. And then you're going to cycle that again, push it to the left. And that's how you form this matrix H. And I do want you to verify, pause the video if you need to, that the matrix H times the matrix G is equal to the zero matrix. So this uh, so the image of G is in fact equal to the kernel of H. So the kernel of H is equal to the image of G, and this is our code C like so. So once you once you just pick, just pick a divisor of X to the N minus one, that forms a cyclic code. All cyclic codes are formed in that manner. And we can then construct its generator uh, matrix just by looking at our generating our generator polynomial and the columns will just be the columns going up to down um, and they then cycle through going downward but then what's also cool is H uh, this the canonical you know the, the canonical matrix H here we can also form using the polynomial H right here for which in this case you read it right to left and then you're going to cycle down uh, a cycle to the left as you work through on these things. That's how you build cyclic codes. And so I'm then going to put this theorem on the screen as we end lecture 31 here, that if we have two, if we have a factorization of x to the n minus 1 into h and g, right? So let's say the coefficients of h are h naught, h1, x, plus h2, x squared, all the way up to h, k, x to the k. And g has its as its coefficients, its, its decomposition, g of x equals g0 plus g1, x plus g2, x squared, all the way up to g n minus k times x to the n minus k. Now, of course, the sum of these exponents does have to add up to the n. So if one of them is k, the other one's n minus k, of course. Then the cyclic code generated by g of x has the following generator matrix, which will be n times n minus k, and we're going to call that g. And then you're going to have the, then you'll have the k by n parity check matrix H. I called it canonical earlier. This isn't necessarily going to be the canonical parity check matrix because it doesn't necessarily have the form A augmented identity. Uh, but that's okay. This one's pretty awesome too. Uh, this is going to be our this is going to be a cyclic code that we can generate from these polynomials. And the pattern always happens the way I described it here. The first column is just the coefficients of, it's just the coefficients of G in uh, ascending order. That usually start with, uh, you start with the G0, then G1, then G2, all the way up till the end, and you get zeros for those places you don't have anymore. And then each subsequent column, you're going to shift down. You're going to shift down all the way through and you eventually should end with the largest coefficient then on the bottom that's how you form g but then with h starting with the top row you're going to put this in descending order so the very very largest coefficient shows up first although there is a bunch of zeros so i actually like to think of it more as going from the right you have the constant term right here then you'll have h1 then h2 um, all the way up to hk that gives you the first row. So again, with G, the first column is the polynomial G, and then there's a cyclic shift downward. Um, but with H, the first row is the polynomial H, and then you're going to see this shift downward. Um, every time you go down a row, it's going to shift to the left, shift to the left, shift to the left, shift to the left, until eventually HK is over here. With the G columns, of course, every time you go down, uh, that is, every time you go to the right, it's going to go down one. And so you have this cyclic behavior, and you're going to get the properties that H times G does equal zero. So this does give you a linear code. Um, and this linear code, in fact, will be cyclic. And the, these two matrices, the generator and parity check matrices, are developed from the polynomials G and H so effortlessly. So even if you don't want to do like the group ring stuff, you can turn this code into a matrix, just like we did in Math 4220, but it'll have this cyclic property because we utilize the algebraic structure of a group ring. And that's pretty awesome. Group rings are the coolest. And that brings us to the end of lecture 31. I appreciate you from watching. If you learned anything about polynomial codes or group rings in this video, please like these videos. Um, subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this in the future. And if you have any questions whatsoever that when you watch these videos, please post them in the comments. I'll be glad to answer them as soon as I can. Bye, everyone.